Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless second thessalonians 2 9 through 12 the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of satan with all power signs and lying wonders and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved and for this reason God will send them strong delusion, that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Could transgenderism be the strong delusion God sends in an unbelieving and unrepentant world in the last days? Many people think the strong delusion is an alien deception, and it might be, but it's looking more and more like transgenderism could also be a possibility. Why is God sending a strong delusion? The Bible makes it clear. They perish because they refused to love the truth and so be saved. Simply put, God sends a strong delusion to those who choose not to believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. The prophet Isaiah puts it succinctly. Just as they have chosen their own ways and their soul delights in their abominations, so will I choose their delusions and bring their fears on them because when I called, no one answered. When I spoke, they did not hear, but they did evil before my eyes and chose that in which I do not delight. This is the saddest and at the same time by far the most hopeful day on the Christian calendar. There was a time not so long ago when the overwhelming majority of Americans observed Good Friday. They got up, they went to church, they talked about it at the office and at dinner that night. It was part of their culture. That's no longer true. Tonight, you wonder how many Americans even know it's Good Friday. So after hundreds of years, this has finally become a non-Christian country. But it's not a secular country. You sometimes hear people call it that, but they are wrong. There are no secular countries. Every country has a religion because every person has a religion, even if it's atheism. Everybody worships something. We're born that way, we can't get away from it. So what is America's religion now? Well, as it happens, we have video. This is from St. Mark's Lutheran Church in Fargo, North Dakota. It was taken on April 2nd. That was the first Sunday after the mass killing in Nashville, in which three adults and three children were murdered at a Christian school for being Christians. In the old America, Christian pastors would have preached about this. They would have acknowledged the evil on display, and they would have prayed for those who'd been killed. A form of that is still happening today, but the roles have been inverted. In America's new religion, the victims are not the children who died in Nashville. The victim is the woman who killed them because Audrey Hale called herself transgender, she was, by definition, a holy martyr. Watch this pastor in a formerly Christian church compare Audrey Hale to Jesus. Leaders were looking for any excuse, valid or not, to crucify Jesus. And they found that reason. It's baffling to me that someone's existence can be so threatening, that people decide they need to be controlled, that they need to have laws made against them, or even worse, that the people that they find to be so threatening should die. So Audrey Hale's very existence as a transgender person was so threatening to authorities that they killed her, just as the Pharisees killed Jesus. Her death had nothing to do with the fact she just murdered six people. That was the pastor's sermon at St. Mark's in Fargo. 1 Timothy 4.1 Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. So it's pretty clear that St. Mark's Lutheran Church is no longer a Christian church. So what is it now? Well, it's a transgenderist church, one of many. Transgenderism is this country's priestess growing religion. Like many faiths, its theology features a supernatural transfiguration, the moment a person is transmogrified from one sex to another. 
Converts to this faith abandoned their old lives. Former identities no longer exist. They're dead names. They believe that they themselves are God with the power to control nature. And if you think about it, this should be a concern because it's a recipe for extremism. People who believe that they're God tend to react very badly when told that they're not. So if you were running the government and you wanted to prevent violence in your own country, you would be very concerned about the growth of a cult like this. But the Biden administration is not concerned at all. In fact, it is cheering this cult on. Watch Joe Biden's spokeswoman just days after the massacre of children in Nashville explain that when transgenderists, quote, fight back, she approves. 14 states have now banned gender affirming health care, while some of these laws are currently blocked by courts. This is a dangerous, a dangerous attack. This is awful news. We'll be very clear about that. LGBTQI plus kids are resilient. They are fierce. They fight back. They're not going anywhere. And we have their back. This administration has their back. They are fierce. They fight back. So this is coming on the heels just days after a massacre in which children were murdered. So the White House is not decrying that. The White House is endorsing it as clearly as it possibly could. And that's why no one from the Biden White House is visiting the grieving Christian families in Nashville. Instead, today, Kamala Harris went to Nashville to promote three Democratic Party legislators who led a riot at the State House, a riot designed to promote, yes, the cult of transgenderism. So consider the message here. We're on your side. And not only we're on your side, you, the mentally ill who may be armed, are the victims. And you are being genocided. Your very existence is at stake. In other words, making paranoid people on the edge more paranoid. So fight back. You are fierce. This is not the message to give to religious nuts with weapons, and particularly not this group of religious nuts with weapons. This is a group that has for years been committing acts of violence at rates much higher than you would expect across a cross-section of the population. To give a few examples, last year, a trans girl tried to assassinate Brett Kavanaugh at his home. Then a self-described non-binary shooter, also a member of the cult, murdered five people at a Colorado nightclub. In 2019, a trans teenager shot nine people in a high school, killing one. That was in Denver. In 2018, a mentally ill transgenderist shot up a Rite Aid distribution center in Aberdeen, Maryland. That massacre killed four. So you can see where this is going, and you shouldn't be surprised by it. Mental illness leads to violence. This is a species of mental illness, and there's no mental illness greater than the delusion that you are God. And that's exactly what this cult teaches its adherents. You are God. You can change nature with your will. Now, with the endorsement of the Biden administration, the terrorism that is the inevitable result of this belief system is accelerating. Police just arrested a man called William Whitworth. He's a transgenderist, uses the name Lily, in the state of Colorado. Apparently, he had a kill list and a manifesto. He was planning to attack three schools and churches, and apparently some talk show hosts, too. So it would be nice to see this manifesto or the kill list, but of course you can't see it because the authorities are, as they have in Nashville, hiding it. Now, why are they hiding it? Because they have to. When your religious views violate the unyielding laws of nature itself, you have no choice but to hide things. You have to. Deception is mandatory, and it will soon be reflected in the law. That is already happening in Canada which is in some sense the new California. If you want to know our future, look north, not west. In Canada, transgenderism will soon be the justification for suspending all freedom of speech. A new law will ban speech that offends transgenderists near drag performances. So you can't complain. Good morning, everyone. Well, I bet you didn't think it would take a drag queen to throw in a lash and sashay to Queen's Park to stomp out a very important issue, did you? Apart from the glamorous, dazzling, and wacky characters I play on television, 
or in venues around the world. I also deal with the very real struggles of homophobia, hate crimes, and acts of purposeful intent to intimidate and now disqualify who I am as a person and what I do as a job. The drag communities are, do, are, are done waiting for this government to take real action in effective ways, and so is the Ontario NDP. The proposed legislation does two things, and I will go through them. Firstly, it enables the Attorney General to create a 2S LGBTQI+, community safety zone to prohibit within 100 meters of the property any homophobic, transphobic act of intimidation, threat, offensive threats, offensive remarks, protest, disturbance, and distribution of hate propaganda within the meaning of the uh, criminal code. It also comes with it a penalty of $25,000 if prosecuted successfully. So here's a rule of thumb that is worth tacking on your refrigerator because it explains so much. If the people who claim to be victims are working to oppress you, they're not actually victims. They are oppressors. Once again, with this cult specifically, that is inevitable because at its core is a provable lie defied and revealed by the unchanging laws of science. We do not have the power to change our sex. It is in our DNA. It is in our bone structure. You dig up a fossilized skeleton thousands of years later and you can tell it's sex. We can't change that much as we might want to, much as we might feel deep sympathy for those who want to. We still can't change it. That is true. And so, of course, they have to criminalize your observing that it's true, because that is a challenge to the core of their faith. These are religious extremists on a jihad against the population. And in order to win, they have to force everyone to lie, period. But there are always a few who refuse, no matter what, to lie. And one of those is Riley Gaines. So last year, Riley Gaines was a collegiate swimmer at the University of Kentucky. During an NCAA championship, she and her teammates were forced to compete against a man called William Thomas. Now, there's been a lot of news coverage of William Thomas, but here's the truth. Thomas had been a male swimmer at the University of Pennsylvania, and he had a lackluster swimming career, so he came up with a plan. He decided to give himself a female name. And soon, he started winning women's swimming competitions. So what do you call that? Well, you call it cheating. That's cheating. And Thomas's cheating was not a secret. It was obvious to everybody. But only Riley Gaines was brave enough to say something about it. She came on our show last July. And that night, we watched Leah Thomas win a national title and blow all the other females completely out of the water. And that next day, we came back, and the mood had shifted to where people were mad. Um, the girls, you know, there were tears. Um, these poor ninth and 17th place finishers who missed out on being named an All-American. Um, there's extreme discomfort in the locker room. There's, you know, kind of these grumbles well, of... Is he wandering around the women's locker room? <laughs> yeah. When, and that's not something, you know, we were forewarned about, which I don't think is right in any means. Um, changing in a locker room with someone who has different parts. So you can probably tell just from that clip that Riley Gaines is not an ideologue. She's not a political activist. She was a college swimmer and assumed that she would be just that, a college swimmer. But she was forced into a place where she had no choice but to tell the truth. She was not going to violate her own conscience. And the story she told was almost hard to believe in a supposedly rational country, but it was real. And because nobody else had the courage to stop this trend before it accelerated, similar things began to happen all over American sports and with predictable results. In November, the National Hockey League sponsored an all-trans draft tournament. A male cross-dresser was allowed to compete against women. What do you think happened? Well, during the game, the man lightly checked a woman into the boards and gave her a concussion. Yeah, because he's a man, she's a woman. In October, a North Carolina high school volleyball player suffered a significant head injury after another man dressed as a woman spiked a ball at her head. You can watch that on YouTube. It's on video. It's awful. But nobody should be surprised that it happened. Nine years ago, a man called Fallon Fox declared himself a woman and competed in a mixed martial arts fight against a competitor called Tamika Brents, who was a woman. In a total of 36 seconds on the mat, Fox fractured the bones in Tamika Brents face and won the fight. As Tamika Brents later put it, quote, I've never felt so overpowered in my life and I'm an abnormally strong female. Well, yeah, because even an abnormally strong female, which she is, is no match for most biological men. Everybody knows that. It is measurable. We don't need to guess. 
But almost nobody at this point, at this deeply contemptible point of cowardice in the West, almost nobody will say that because they're afraid. But Riley Gaines will say that because she's not afraid. So last night, Gaines went to San Francisco State University to talk about her experiences in NCAA swimming. And Riley Gaines is not a hater. She is a measured, decent person who believes in logic and reason and finding common ground with people who disagree with her. She does not think she is God. And so at San Francisco State last night, the zealots attacked her. A mob surrounded Riley Gaines and prevented her from moving through the hallways. At one point, the thugs said they wouldn't let her pass. During the chaos, a man dressed as a woman punched her several times. The mob howled with rage, screaming threats and obscenities. We're not overstating. Here's what it looked like. I'm coming, I'm good, I'm good. Trust me, I'm good. Go ahead. That's the most dangerous extremist group in the United States. There's no mistaking it. Riley Gaines, once again, is not an ideologue or a demagogue. She's not out to hurt anybody. She's a college swimmer who was cheated against and doesn't think that's fair. In the face of that, people threaten her life and scream transparently nonsensical things like trans women are women. Trans women are not women. And if you think otherwise, you were delusional. And they are delusional and therefore dangerous. Riley Gaines is one of the bravest people we know, and we're grateful to have her join us tonight. Riley Gaines, thank you so much for coming on. Was that as horrifying as it looked? Um, the police did not inform me of any sort of action plan. Um, Turning Point USA invited me to the campus. I delivered a very civil and respectful speech where I had great dialogue with even protesters who were participating in a sit-in. All of a sudden, after my speech, the room was stormed. The lights were turned off, and I was rushed. Um, with no one there to escort me to a safe place. I was punched, um, I was hit multiple times, I was shoved, until finally we exited the room, um, but we could not leave because the protesters flooded the halls, and so I was pushed into a classroom along that hallway where I was barricaded in for three hours. Three hours? Why didn't someone with the gun come and bring you to safety? Because they were terrified. They were scared to put their hands on these people because they know what these people are capable of. Um, these people yelled obscene, violent, vulgar things to both myself and the officers. And the officers, I could tell, didn't feel comfortable putting them in a position that would mean they do their job, um, which is a really scary, chilling thought. This is the most dangerous extremist movement in the United States right now. It's getting bigger, not smaller. It's gaining steam, not losing it. The White House has endorsed it. I mean, what does this mean for you? And I just can't say it again since I happen to know you. You are an inherently moderate person who means harm to no one. But are you worried about your safety going forward? You know, I am worried about my safety. I have to be now. Um, when we have people who are willing to do this, and we know why they're willing to do this, it's because they don't have reason, they don't have logic, they don't have science, they don't have common sense on their side. That's on my side. And so they, they protrude um, by violence, whether it's physical or verbal violence. Um, but what this means for me, this does not deter me. This assures me that I am doing the right thing. This will not silence me when they want me to be silenced. It just means I need to speak louder. Really quick, has any, uh, did anyone in the state of California in authority, any political figure, for example, defend you? No, not the dean of students, not the campus police. I mean, if, if we can't identify that as evil, then we've really lost, lost the thread. This past week has been one of the most bizarre, freaky, strange, and demonic weeks I have ever experienced. The LGBTQI alphabet crew seem to be multiplying themselves at a very rapid rate as they are appearing all across movies, sitcoms, corporate ads, news media, and even the church. So what is behind this shocking societal shift? I believe it very well could be demon possession. Demons are fallen angels as we read in Revelation 12.9. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. 
he was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. When Satan fell, he took one-third of the angels with him, as we read in Revelation 12.4. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. Demons are fallen angels who, along with Satan, chose to rebel against God. Some of the demons are already locked in darkness, bound with everlasting chains, as we read in Jude 1.6. And the angels, who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. Other demons are free to roam the earth, as we read in Ephesians 6.12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Demons, as spirit beings, have the ability to take possession of a physical body. When Jesus Christ traveled through ancient Israel 2,000 years ago, he frequently cast evil spirits out of people he encountered, as we read in Mark 5, 1-9. Then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadarenes. When he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no one could bind him, not even with chains. Because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces, neither could anyone tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him. And he cried out with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I implore you by God, that you do not torment me. For he said to him, Come out of the man, unclean spirit. Then he asked him, What is your name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Jesus, during his earthly ministry, encountered many demons, and he drove out the spirits with a word, as we read in Matthew 8.16. When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word, and healed all who were sick. Satan and his demons now look to destroy the work of God and deceive anyone they can, as we read in 1 Peter 5.8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. The demons are described as evil spirits, unclean spirits, lying spirits, and angels of Satan. Satan and his demons deceive the world, promote false doctrine, attack Christians, and combat the holy angels. The fallen angels are enemies of God, but they are defeated enemies. Christ has disarmed the powers and authorities, and he has made a public spectacle of them, as we read in Colossians 2.15. Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. As we get closer to Jesus' return, the world will grow more evil, and demon possession will increase. But take heart, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive in faith the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance 
is not a work that earns salvation. Repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance, but it is one of the results of genuine faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.